morning, everyone. So great to be here today. Um, we will kick off the session call, get ready, the money is coming, everything you need to prepare and get excited for advertising in VR. So first of all, I wanna just take a step back and think about um, what it feels like to be in a new medium and, and how, do we, um, what, how do we bring success to it. And I look back to 2012 in mobile when a little United Kingdom uh, studio called Natural Motion asked me to help them take their game backbreaker football to the brand marketplace. When I sat down with the team, I think they expected me to put a banner here, a billboard there. And what I asked for was to put Kentucky Fried Chicken in the football game. And the reason was that we had this marketer who really would capture the native experience in mobile games, um, allow their brand to be fun and playful, and we did a, um, a Kentucky Fried Chicken challenge, and when the player finished the challenge, they unlocked a special move for their uh, avatars in the game, which was the chicken dance. So I know you guys are all like, oh my God, chicken and football doesn't exactly make sense. But let me tell you, that was one of the first times I saw the game industry really take advantage of the revenue from a brand um, and the opportunity of the device to, to really have fun and be playful. So today we sit in mobile at $5 billion in in-game advertising revenue. And as Carl Sagan says, sometimes you have to actually look where you are to understand how you got there. So at Unity, we believe that VR, AR, MR advertising can be even bigger than what we've all accomplished in mobile. So let's take a little look back at the history of advertising to help us um, take some lessons and make sure that we don't repeat, uh, re repeat the ills of the past. If you look at the most, uh, no the known modern advertising was print and billboards. Classic advertising, now a couple hundred years old. It's the little script in your newspaper, in your magazine, maybe on the side of the road. Certainly was um, the beginning. And when the first immersive medium of radio came about, what did they do? They read billboard and print ads. Literally, the spokesman of the show would read the print ad. Until someone said, oh my god, there's so much more. We have the power of sound. And the jingle was created. And the jingle went on to make radio, which by the way, even today is still a, a, a large uh, revenue source, to be uh, now, at that point, the most powerful ad platform uh, around. The artists would do the jingle, maybe you'd have some actors, do voiceovers. So the 50s came around, and what is still the largest ad medium in the world, television was invented and came to mass adoption by consumers. And what did we do in television? We read the jingle or sang the jingle from radio. So completely missed the power of sight and motion, which television unlocked. And of course, about 15 to 20 years into the medium, the, the television commercial was invented, which really is a mini movie. It's sight, sound, motion in, within the professionally developed content of television. It's still the most powerful and highest revenue source ad product in the world. So 90s come, we launched the internet, you know what we did? We went all the way back to print. <laughs> we even called them billboards. Billboards and banners in your app, on your web page. I guess we didn't even have apps then. And m big innovation was video, still flat 2D page with a video. Mobile comes about, much more personal experience. What did we do? We went all the way back to the billboard. Everyone hates banner ads and mobile, uh, even brands, by the way. And we, uh, we, we didn't invent, and so it took us about seven years to really get to a place where now we're capturing the power of a personal device, sight, sound, and motion through portrait video. So what do you think the industry's first move in VR, AR, MR is? Porting mobile video to the space. So while 360 video is certainly more immersive than, than standard video, it isn't what we believe will be an exciting native experience in the most immersive medium ever, VR. 
What Unity thinks about as the standard for our first phase in native advertising that we call the virtual room. And we worked with the Internet Advertising Bureau. The IB is a standard body across all of digital advertising, creating standards and ease of adoption for marketers. And so this is an IB innovation standard, and it comes with three co consistent components. The first is the environment. So last evening over cocktails with some awesome guys from Unity Studios, um, we laughed about, oh, you know, great, throw a coffee shop in the VR room. So wh what I like to point out here is that this, by, by making an environment as your baseline standard, it is the sandbox for the, for the creator, for the brand. And they can, make it any, they can make it anything that they want. So I like to think of this as, you know, while we're looking at a coffee shop, I know if we were with a really creative brand like Gatorade, for example, who, who does some pretty innovative stuff, they would be immersing you deep into the pitch of a football field, and next thing you would see is objects. So in this case, a coffee cup, maybe a selection of coffees. You could think about it as the soccer ball sitting on the side to, to um, next move is interaction. So driving consumers through a storyline for the brand. It's the same mechanism in a micro experience that great content creators do in their apps, right? Take the consumer on a journey, have them interact and participate in the content, and hopefully have some sort of a delight moment, which of course could be shooting the goal, could be finding your perfect flavor, whatever. So how do we get the consumer to this place? First of all, what it's not is a micro app that the, that the advertiser spends millions and millions of dollars distributing. It is an app within an app that takes advantage of your great content, drives money to your great content, and in essence is surfaced in an opt-in way. So think about it as an Easter egg or a hidden um, journey behind the wall. We like to think about it as the user opting to fall through Alice in Wonderland's you know, looking glass. They immerse themselves into this environment, pop, you're in the middle of the coffee shop, you hear the coffee roasting, you, you know, whatever the brand has, has made to delight you. You complete your action and boom, you're back into the original app that you as the consumer chose to download, chose to purchase, to chose to interact with. So why do we think it works? Well, first of all, because more content is better. How, I'm sure many of you have heard um, John Riccatello's talk about the gap of disappointment. The, the, one of the largest drivers in the early disappointment era of a new medium like we are in with VR is there's not enough great content. And you know who has the deepest pockets for great content? Brand marketers. Coca-Cola probably spent over $10 billion in advertising last year. The first time I ever saw a mobile ad that, that literally brought me to like sharing and showing people wasn't an app that I bought or downloaded to consume. It was a, a, a Mini Cooper ad. It was the perfect example of taking advantage of the device and making it personal to me, which was certainly new for native experience for mobile. The second reason we know it will work is that advertising has always driven content. And so what do I mean by that? That means that brands bring money into professionally developed content arenas like FIFA, you know, the largest uh, football holding uh, property in the world, to pay, to to talk to passionate audiences about football, to drive them to watch the, the game, to go to a match, to get even deeper into the content. Here you have Domino's who, who, who spent millions of dollars promoting the Britain's uh, Got Talent premiere on television. So they drive tune in to the actual show that they're advertising in. And of course, th right now this month, Dr. Pepper around the globe is promoting ticket sales of Wonder Woman, actually driving this beautiful artist creation, driving revenue for them, and also delighting consumers at the same time. The third reason it will work is that consumers choose ads. 80% of consumers in digital experiences choose to opt into advertising instead of either paying full price or maybe getting something additive. 
In essence, consumers click for free stuff. They will go into the portal, into their little Alice in Wonderland experience. So while we're super excited about the next phase of this, there are some pitfalls. And let me tell you, I have firsthand experience at falling into some of these. The first is context. Everybody, every studio in entertainment, and by the way, most brands early in entertainment, always think context, contextual relevance equals product placement. It just doesn't. The world of VR will be magical for consumers, drive content developers revenue, and will not be strewn with a bunch of soda can machines. And why I can tell you this, take a moment to actually read this. Kotaku published this in 2001. So in our early days at electronic arts and video game sales, we decided product placement for Intel and McDonald's was a good idea in The Sims. I mean, of course, it's The Sims. It's, a, it's a basically a real world experience in PC gaming. And we put the McDonald's, and it took our studio 100 hours to develop the perfect color scheme and have the right menu. And it was really hard to pull off, and not that much more money than if we had done something at scale that was more standardized. So um, this was definitely a claim to fame on, a, on an early pitfall. The second reason to, to validate why not only is it hard for your studios, let's just look at the money. Everybody thinks product placement is a really big money maker. It's not. Only 6% of the global entertainment brand dollars go to product placement. And television, who has the highest percentage, has 11% of their revenues, brand revenues, come from product placement. And it took the top 10 shows 30,000 product integrations to pull off 11%. It doesn't work. The second, what, what really works, when, when someone says contextual relevance matters, here's what matters. The brand taking the consumer on a journey that matters to that audience. So it's a brand that matters to the audience, it's not product placement within the content. The second big pitfall is in the early days, the channels all want the brands to buy through them. So let me, let me stick with the football example and walk through, it, through an analogy. So brand A, Coke, wants to really capture hearts and minds of FIFA fans across the globe. What do they want to do? They want to go to FIFA. They want to buy FIFA. But what does Canal Plus tell them? Buy FIFA from me. What does B-Skype B tell them? Buy FIFA from me. So all of a sudden, this beautiful IP has bifurcated in four platforms. And this has never worked. It didn't work in cable. It didn't work in video games, when Microsoft said, you have to buy FIFA World Cup and Madden from me, it didn't work in mobile. And it's not gonna work in VR. So we spend a, lot, a great deal of time studying history, which is frankly, as we know, the history of stupidity. So let's not make these mistakes. The future is bright, and what we can do as an economy here, early content creators marrying with great and innovative brands we can build a world that delights consumers, blends between the virtual and reality to drive content revenues and brand experiences. So with your help, we think we can do this economy. I'm gonna leave you on this one note, which is how will it work for you? First of all, most importantly, content is always king. I wanted to say that again. Platforms try to tell you that they're the king, Content is always king, it always has been in the history of media. So starting off with building great content experience is the most important. Those content experiences are amazing and interesting and they attach consumers who choose to buy them or play with them or interact with them, which then drives devices and devices build more platforms which brings more consumers. And then when more consumers show up, what, who, who shows up with the deep pockets? Advertisers. So they bring their money, they bring their creativity to not only power your game through distribution promotion, like the example of the Coke Trophy Tour in FIFA, but they also pay you for the privilege to connect within the context of the right audience that you're reaching in your content. So that's how we think we can pull this off. You're at the beginning of it, the most important phase of it, and 
at Unity, the Internet Advertising Bureau, we all really look forward to helping the economy get started so that we can move beyond this gap of disappointment and really start honing in. So thank you very much. I'll take some questions now. Thank you.